Hi guys, this is a tutorial about breeding perfect Pokemon in Pokemon X and Y. Um, if you've bred before, you're going to be happy to find out that they made breeding for perfect Pokemon a lot easier this generation. Um, and there's some new mechanics that'll like make, it makes passing down egg moves and hidden abilities uh, a little bit more convenient. So I'm going to just hop right into it. Changes to breeding in X and Y. Egg moves. Both the father and the mother can now pass down egg moves. That used to be a father exclusive. Um, hidden abilities, also known as dream world abilities. They're now called hidden abilities because you can get them outside of the dream world. Um, both female and male parents can now pass down hidden abilities. That used to be a female exclusive. The male needs a ditto if he's going to do it alone. Um, females have a, an overall greater chance of passing down the ability, but you have the best odds if both the male and female have the hidden ability. Um, so that's good news too. That'll make you know a lot of Dream World Pokemon or Dream World ability Pokemon easier to um, obtain through breeding. And special Pokeballs, which I think this is my favorite little you know Easter egg that they added. The baby will inherit the Pokeball from the female parent, so you're no longer stuck having offspring with just Pokeballs. You can have them with Dive Ball, Luxury Ball, Premier Ball, whatever the female parent's in. The new baby's gonna have that same Pokeball, which I think is really cool. Um, necessities for successful breeding. So guys, this is probably what you're going to need. If you want to get perfect IVs, this is the stuff you're going to want to have. Um, Friend Safari, this is essential. I'll get to it in a second. Um, you get that after you, 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 know, you beat the game. You have access to it. That's going to be really important. Uh, synchronizers for passing on natures. The Everstone, which you get in Geosange Town. Uh, Destiny Knot, Really, really important, guys. Yeah, you can grab that in Sea Ledge City Hotel. I don't know how the f you pronounce that. Power items from the Battle Mason. Those are optional, but they're really helpful. They only cost 16 battle points each. Um, you're going to need to talk to the IV Judge a bunch, who's in Key Loud City Pokemon Center. And Flame Body is really helpful because you're going to be able to hatch these eggs in half the time. And trust me, guys, you're going to be hatching a lot of eggs. Friend Safari. Every Pokemon in the Friend Safari is guaranteed to have at least two stats with perfect IVs. This is bananas, guys. This makes life so much easier for everyone. You're going to catch some male parents with the same egg group as the Pokemon you are breeding. I'm, in this scenario, in this tutorial, I'm trying to get a perfect Gyarados, so I'm going to talk about Magikarp a bunch. Um, you're going to want to grab a bunch of male parents of the same egg group as the Pokemon you're breeding, so just keep that in mind. It doesn't have to be the same exact Pokemon you're breeding, just the same egg group. Um, and if you want the hidden ability, grab a female from the Friend Safari because Friend Safari Pokemon have hidden abilities, so that's perfect for this too. Um, best scenario is to catch some Dittos. If you have a Ditto Safari, Friend Safari, you're really lucky and take advantage of that um, because Dittos can pass down the IVs to anything. Synchronize and Everstone. Synchronize is going to help with getting the right nature for the parents who will be breeding your offspring. Um, and Everstone is going to help maintain this nature because the parent holding the, the Everstone passes down their nature to the offspring 100% of the time. Destiny Knot. This is the most important item for breeding perfect Pokemon. Without it, offspring can only inherit a maximum of three IVs from both of its parents. Clearly, guys, you're going to want you know, five perfect IVs. My Gyarados is not going to need special attack, so I'm going to want five. Um, Destiny Knot actually raises this maximum to five. You can pass down five IVs from both parents total, and that's really important because that's all you need. Um, so items, power items, while not necessary, they are useful in the early stages of breeding. Attaching a power item to a parent guarantees that that corresponding stat IV is passed down to the offspring. This is great for harder to get IVs such as zero speeds for Trick Room, um, and it's really important early on if you know if you're trying to, you're going to want to start laddering IVs onto your female, and so this will help you start passing down the stats that she doesn't have. Um, that'll be clear in a second. I got I got some examples to show you guys. Um, the IV Judge. He looks at your Pokemon, tells you which stats have 31 IVs in. Super important because you can't really use a simulator for this since the Pokemon are going to be a level 1 when you hatch them. You can go just go talk to the judge. If he says X stat can simply not be beat, you have a perfect IV. If he tells you how terrible it is, well, you don't have a perfect IV. Um, this is important because every time you hatch, you're going to need to know what IVs your Pokemon has. So you're going to be talking to him a lot. Um, the process. We have a simple six-step plan. 
Step one, synchronize in Friends Safari. Go grab your synchronizer and visit the Friends Safari. Uh, your goal is to grab a ton of parents for the Pokemon you were trying to breed. You want as many males as possible with different combinations of perfect IVs to pass down to the offspring, and leading with a synchronizer ensures the nature you want to have for your eventual Pokemon will be passed down. So, let's get an example. Uh, my friend Safari, let's say I have a Ditto friend Safari, just for ease of, you know, the tutorial. Um, I'm going to bring my Adamant Synchronized Ralts to the friend Safari. I'm going to lead with him. He can be fainted. That's cool. I'm just going to go, and I'm going to catch a bunch of Ditto. So Ditto 1 has 31 attack and 31 speed IVs. Ditto 2 has 31 special defense, 31 speed. All the way down and down and down. I'm just catching a ton of them, and I'm going to go talk to the IV judge. And I'm going to find out what I, perfect IVs they have, and I'm going to keep track of that. And you want to you know, you want a wide variety because you're going to need this variety a little later. Um, the adamant nature is really important because you're going to need to pass down to the female, but you can, you, you'll see in a second. So make sure you got that synchronizer with adamant if you want an adamant Pokemon because otherwise you're going to be breeding for days trying to hit that nature. It's so much easier if you just synchronize and then Everstone. Step two, Everstone breeding. Attach an Everstone to the parent with the nature you want to pass down. Breed that parent with a female of the Pokemon you were looking to get, and then hatch eggs until you have a female with the nature you want. At this point, you're going to move the Everstone to the baby, and from now on, the female will continue to hold the Everstone to continuously pass down the nature. Woo, that's a mouthful. This is when it starts to get a little complicated. It's still not that complicated, though. I got a great example here to show you. So, we have an adamant ditto that we caught from the front safari. We're going to give it the Everstone, and we're going to put it in the daycare with the female Magikarp, because we want baby Magikarp, right? So you're going to hatch eggs until you get a baby female um, Magikarp, and this means if you have a baby female, it's guaranteed to have an adamant nature because of that Everstone on the Ditto. Give it the Everstone, the new baby female, and replace its mom with it. So now we're going to have a baby female Magikarp with an Everstone that has an adamant nature in the female spot. Next, breeding down from a male parent. Breed down one or two IVs from a male parent. If you have a male with three or four perfect IVs, that's great. Just go ahead and straight up attach a destiny knot to it. If not, attach the power item that corresponds to the IV that you want to pass down. For example, if you have a ditto with 31 attack and 31 speed, attach a power anklet to the ditto will guarantee the offspring will have 31 speed IVs. Now, this is important. Why? Well, let's see here. So we have Ditto 1, which I caught in the Friend Safari. It's got 31 attack and 31 speed. Now we have that female Magikarp that we had just hatched over in the, in the mom spot. Um, she's female, she's adamant, and now she's holding the Everstone so she can pass down that adamant nature. What happens is you're going to hold either, like I said, if you have three perfect IVs, hold the Destiny Knot to pass down as many of those as possible. If not, a single power item will do it because you're guaranteeing you're passing down one of these IV stats. You're going to want to hatch eggs until that baby, you get a baby female, they'll all be adamant, so that's not a variable, and if you're holding the power anklet, it's going to get 31 speed IVs. So basically, the hardest part here is getting a female, that's still a 50-50 shot, no big deal. Hopefully, if you're lucky, you'll also pass down the attack stat, but that's not guaranteed yet. So either way, you're right now you're starting to build perfect IVs on the female, who will then replace the mom and give it the new Everstone. So as soon as you get this baby female with 31 speed IVs, give it the Everstone and replace its mom with it. Next, improving the number of IVs. After hatching a female with one or two perfect IVs from the father, replace the female that is currently in the daycare. Don't forget to move the Everstone over to the new female. That's what I just showed you guys in that past example. Pick a male with two perfect IVs that are different from the female and attach a destiny knot to it. This allows more IVs to pass down to the baby. Your goal is to improve the number of perfect IVs on your female. Example time. So, we had that, that our newest Magikarp is female Adamant Everstone and has 31 speed IVs because of the power anklet we had on Ditto. Now we're going to give this Ditto Destiny Knot, or you can give it another power item. Destiny Knot's probably smarter. And I just changed out the Dittos so that he didn't have a perfect speed IV because we already have that on, the, on, on, our, mat, on our mom Magikarp. So with Destiny Knot, you're, hope, you're just going to hatch and hatch and hatch until you get a baby female Magikarp that's holding 
or that has at least three perfect IVs. Because, you know, between the three of them, they have three, you're passing down five. You know, the odds aren't the best, but it will happen if you hatch enough. And you're just going to repeat that until you get three perfect IVs. Um, and once you get three perfect IVs on that Magikarp, you can give it a Everstone and replace its mom with it. Um, another option, if it's taking too long and Destinat's really just not passing down the three you need, you can give the Ditto a power item, which will guarantee another one of those perfects, and then hopefully just hit that speed IV. Um, and then you'll have two perfect IVs you can switch the mom out with and then go for Destiny Knot, which will make your chances higher. Either way, um, this one's going to take a little bit of time of hatching. And the point is to get as many perfect IVs on the female as possible and then switching that female with the mom. All right, step five, mucho perfect IVs. Once you get three perfect IVs on the female, switch the parents again. The female with three IVs replaces the female with two IVs and a male with another combination of IVs that are not perfect on the female. So you're always keeping the perfect IVs on, that, on the male that you have caught in the Friend Safari different than the perfect IVs on the female that it's mating with. Remember to keep Destiny Knot and Everstone on the respective Pokemon. That's super important or else your numbers are going to get messed up. And your goal is to end up with at least one 31 in each IV you want to pass down between the parents and as many 31s and important stats between the parents as possible. So, we, gave, we finally got a female and she finally got three perfect IVs. Speed, attack, defense. Because um, we just hatched enough with, you know, Destiny Knot before and we finally got a baby that had all three of those. We exchanged that one with its mom, so now it's in the mom spot. Still holding the Everstone, Adamant, and female. We have that Ditto. I switched out the Ditto. Notice how its two perfect stats are two that the female doesn't have. Give it a Destiny Knot, and you're just going to breed over and over again. And Destiny Knot passes down five from both parents total. Eventually, you're going to get those five, and that's going to be exactly what you need. And you're going to have a perfect Adamant Magikarp, which then you can go evolve into Gyarados and wreck stuff with. So yeah, um, step six is just keep on keeping on. You're gonna keep on doing this until your Pokemon is maxed out in IV stats. Just keep on hatching and then you'll eventually get it. This gets easier as time goes on. Males with a large number of perfect IVs can be used within their egg group to speed up the beginning process. So don't just go ahead and throw away all of your males. Save them for the future. If you have a perfect ditto, like an extremely just 100% perfect ditto, that makes life so easy because it's going to pass down random stats. They're all going to be 31s, and that's going to be easy for the female, and it makes life way easier. And the more perfect IVs between the parents, the better chance of getting perfect IVs on the offspring. That seems pretty simple, too. So just really it's going to be a, a battle of patience. Can you hatch enough eggs, and can you keep checking them? And, but otherwise, this will get you a perfect Pokemon um, every time as long as you, you, know, you follow those steps. And that's about it, guys. Good luck. Uh, thanks for watching. I read every comment you guys write. I try to respond to all of them. And I love every like and, you know, subscribes I get. I, I, I really appreciate it. So thanks for watching. I do a lot of Pokemon tutorials. I hope this helped. And uh, let me know how it goes.